Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Montgomery, and in this video we'll be going through a problem of an RC circuit. Uh, RC, of course, meaning resistors, a uh, circuit that has resistors and capacitors. Uh, in this case, we have a variety of resistors that we see. We have a voltage source, a current source, and then our capacitor sitting up here in this branch. Uh, this is a one and a half farad capacitor, and just note that our voltage VC is indicated as voltage across that capacitor. And we also have a current indicated here, I sub X, which we'll be looking at. So what this problem is telling us is that initially at time T before zero, this switch is in the closed position. Okay, so that will define what our initial conditions are going to look like. And then at time t equals zero, we're going to open that switch, therefore basically you know, disconnecting the source over here. And then we want to ultimately find an expression that's going to tell us how is this voltage Vc going to change with respect to time. So we need to uh, then reevaluate what, what would be the steady state condition or the final state of the charge on that capacitor, uh, and then uh, be able to use that to figure out what that uh, the transient response is uh, through the exponential term. Right? So here, um, to get started, we're just going to look at the initial conditions to, uh, as to what, what is going on with the voltage here and with the current uh, I sub X, both at zero minus, meaning immediately before I close, open the switch, and then also what happens immediately after I open the switch. So if we first start to look at what is the voltage across that capacitor, once again, the switch is closed, the circuit is at steady state, it's been there for a long time, so that capacitor has been fully charged. How do we determine what that would be? Well, what we can look at more or less is if we sort of define a KVL loop, um, let's say around this part of the circuit. Okay. We know that the voltage VC is going to have to be equal to the voltage um, or to the sum of the voltage across the 4 ohm, res 4 ohm resistor and the 6 ohm resistor. And so we could write an expression to uh, tell us what that would look like, specifically that. Vc, uh, if I indicate that that's already indicated as plus to minus there, and if I indicate the voltage drop across this 4 ohm resistor plus to minus, and then just following the path of my KVL loop, and I'd have, um, sorry if I indicate this as plus to minus just to be consistent, um, we'll just go ahead and do it that way. Then we can say Vc plus the voltage drop across that 4 ohm resistor uh, minus, we're seeing the indicated as a voltage rise across the 6 ohm resistor, so that's why I have the minus sign here. Uh, we know that all those have to sum to equal to zero. So then the question is, well, how do I know what the voltage is across this 4 ohm resistor, and how do I know what the voltage is across the 6 ohm resistor? And so if you look at the circuit, um, and thinking about at steady state, this capacitor is basically acting as an open circuit, because there can't have any current flow through that branch of the circuit. Then more or less this half of the circuit is more or less in isolation with respect to this half of the circuit because I have no return current path. They're still connected on the bottom uh, branch here, bottom node rather, uh, but there's no return path for the current. So any current flow that's flowing out of this voltage source is only going to go through this 2 ohm and 4 ohm resistor. Similarly, any current flow from this 5 amp resistor, I mean 5 amp current source, is only going to flow out through the 4 and the 6 ohm resistor. None of the current from here is going to go in this part of the circuit, and then the voltage or the current coming from this source is going to flow into this part of the circuit. So knowing that, we can use that information to determine what the voltage would be specifically across the 4 ohm resistor and the 6 ohm resistor. So doing the one for the 4 ohm resistor here, again, hopefully recall, we should be able to use the voltage divider rule in order to do that. So that would be set up as just saying 4 over the sum of those. 4 over 4 plus 2 ohms would be 6 times the total voltage across both of those resistors is 6 volts. It gives me this here. So we know that that must be 4 volts. Okay, so that's the voltage drop here across this resistor. Now for the uh, what's going on in the 6 ohm resistor, uh, we could do a couple things. We could maybe do um, just current division and then use Ohm's law uh, to find that voltage there. Uh, for this case, just to show a little bit something differently, I'll actually do a, a source transformation of this current source in parallel with this 4 ohm resistor. That would just change our circuit to look like uh, this on, the, on, that, on the, that side of the circuit. Okay, so I just did a source transformation of basically these three elements. This would be my 4 ohm resistor here. This would be my 6 ohm. Okay, that's still branching out. Again, here's where I have my capacitor onto the other side. 
So now what would this voltage here be? Uh, if I indicate this as Vs, and say Vs, we know it's going to be related to this current source and the 4 ohm resistor. So just uh, get ohms all V equals IR. So it'll be 5 amps times 4 ohm resistor. So that'd be 20 volts. Okay. So now with the source transformation, again, we're going to just apply simple um, current division. Uh, again, to indicate what the voltage is across that 6 ohm resistor would be 6 ohms over the sum of these two resistors, would be 10 ohms times 20 volts. Would therefore, give me a quantity of 12 ohms, not 12 volts, right? Okay. So now then, plugging this back into uh, the expression that we have through our KVL loop that we defined earlier uh, would then tell us that VC, again this is VC at zero minus, immediately before I, I can make any changes on the circuit, uh, would have to be equal to this 12 volts minus the 4 volts here for the voltage drop across the 4 ohm resistor, therefore for giving me a quantity of 8 volts. Okay. So that is again the initial basically voltage across my capacitor right here uh, will be this 8 volts. Now again, keep in mind that we know that the voltage across the capacitor cannot instantaneously change as a function of any event happening in the circuit. So we know that even though we've defined this as being at the time zero minus, meaning immediately before I open the switch, we also know that that's going to be equivalent to the voltage at time zero plus, right? Meaning immediately after I throw, I throw the switch, that voltage is still gonna be eight volts across the capacitor. So that'll be important for helping us to determine what's going on. Okay, so that tells us a little bit about the that initial condition of the voltage. Now let's think about what is the initial condition of this current down here in this branch of the circuit. So to do that, let me take a minute to clean the board and then we'll work on that part of the problem. Okay, so thinking now again, how do we determine this current I sub X uh, at the initial condition at time zero minus? Uh, well, again, thinking about how we did this source transformation to go from the current source in parallel with the resistor to the voltage source in series with the same resistor, we see that I sub X would basically just be defined as the current traveling in this loop here, okay? And again, knowing that uh, this is just a single loop because I have no current flow through the resistor, Again, before I um, open the switch, so that everything will stay state. Therefore, I can have no current flow in the bottom part of that circuit there. So I just have a single loop. So basically, to determine what I x is uh, at time zero minus, okay, again, before I open the switch, would just be simply through Ohm's law, more or less. So this would tell me my voltage, 20 volts, divided by the total, sorry, total resistance here, which would be 10 ohms by giving me a current value of two amps, okay? So this is two amps flowing in this part of the circuit immediately before I open the switch. Well, so now if we ask the question, what is I sub X immediately after I open the switch? So I sub X at zero plus times zero plus, okay? Well, what happens there? Well, at that point in time, after I've opened the switch, um, what have I done? Well, now I've basically disconnected this 5 amp source and this 4 ohm resistor, um, or otherwise thinking about I've disconnected this voltage source and the 4 ohm resistor, so I've more or less broken the loop right here where that, uh, that switch would be sitting more or less. Well, as we know, if I have a break in my uh, loop that I have, I cannot have any current flow at all. So immediately after I close that switch, uh, due to that being, or sorry, after I open the switch, due to that being open, I will immediately have no current flow, no longer any current flow through that part of the circuit. There. So that will have to be uh, just a zero amps. Okay. All right, so that kind of uh, establishes what our initial conditions are. So now in order to ultimately again get to the solution of knowing how that voltage is changing with respect to time, the next thing we could look at is maybe figuring out what the time constant tau is. And so let me uh, kind of clean up the board Going ahead, going to go ahead and just erase this part of the circuit since now we're talking about the condition after I've opened that switch. And as we've established, these two elements are not going to influence what happens on this side. So I will do that, make it a little bit easier to see, and we'll go about how we uh, solve the rest of this problem.
Okay, so now looking at um, the circuit as it is, again, after we've opened that switch, so more or less disconnected the, the current source and the resistor that I had on this side. And so now what we see here is just our capacitor uh, with only three resistors to kind of be concerned about and my voltage, my six volt voltage source over here. So we're asking, again, kind of the next step in this process of evaluating how this voltage changes with a, as a function of time. We need to know what that time constant, the RC time constant is here, tau. Okay, so we know tau equals to R times C. So we only have one capacitor in the mix here, so we only we know immediately what the capacitance C is, one and a half farads. Then the question is, again, what is R um, going to be in this case? So the equivalent uh, resistance is what we have to evaluate in order to determine that R, because here I don't have just a single resistor that I'm worried about. And this equivalent resistance we said was the same as a so-called Thevenin equivalent resistance with respect to the terminals of that capacitor right there, okay? So now if you recall how we determined what that Thevenin resistance was, well, the process was basically deactivating any of our independent sources. So again, deactivating a voltage source means we're gonna short it out. So imagine we just have a short circuit here. So then we're, what we're looking at, I'll just kind of redraw it here uh, with respect to the terminals of the capacitor. This resistor here, my four ohm resistor here, uh, the two ohm resistor, and I deactivated this voltage source over here. So again, now we're asking, what is the equivalent resistance looking into the circuit with respect to where that capacitor is sitting uh, physically in the circuit? So in order to, to get this, we see that, uh, what do we have? Like a, maybe this two ohm resistor looks like it's in parallel with this four ohm resistor. And then the combined combination of those two resistances would be then in series with the six ohm resistor. So we just have six plus the four in parallel with the two ohm resistor. Um, so ultimately coming out with a value of 22 thirds uh, ohms is what I got uh, as far as that goes. Okay. So now taking this quantity, plugging it back into my equation for tau. So again, my capacitance is one and a half farads times 22 thirds ohms for my equivalent resistance, uh, giving me a tau of 11 seconds pretty long time constant, but that's not to be unexpected given that this uh, capacitor that I have is fairly large, one and a half farads, it's a pretty large uh, capacitor that's going to really slow down the response of the circuit. Okay. All right, so now knowing the time constant, the final part of our process then is to determine the final uh, condition. So what is the voltage across that capacitor going to be after this part of the circuit's reached steady state? Uh, so let me take a quick minute again to clear my board and then we'll go about answering that part of the question. Okay, so the final part here is to evaluate what the, um, the voltage across that capacitor is going to be as time goes to infinity, or as we said when we talk about steady state, that indicates that we've reached five time constants, so around a minute worth of, worth of time we'll have reached that steady state, and so what is the voltage going to be then across that capacitor? Okay, so again, now if that capacitor is has reached a new steady state from what it was previously, because again, it started out uh, when we had the other part of the circuit connected at eight volts, but now that part's been disconnected. We only have this single six volt source here. Um, so we know that as it reaches steady state, it's going to again act like an open circuit because I have no current flow through this branch, okay? And so therefore, if I, as we've talked about previously, if I have no uh, current flow through the resistor, then I have no current flow sorry, no current flow through my capacitor, thereby indicating, of course, that I can have no current flow through the six ohm resistor, telling me I have no voltage drop across that six ohm resistor. So the voltage then across this capacitor would have to be the same as the voltage drop across this four ohm resistor here. So the question as to what the final voltage is is really a question as of what is the voltage gonna be across this four ohm resistor, given that I have a six volt source and this other two ohm resistor. So again, we can simply apply a voltage division expression to allow us to calculate what that would be. So here we would simply have, i uh, kind of drop it down to the next line, four over the combined uh, total of these two resistors, four plus two is gonna be my six ohms times a six volt source. Now here the only minor difference is that I have to pay attention to the polarity that's been indicated 
uh, of this voltage, it's from plus to minus here, which means I need to have a voltage of plus to minus across that forum. But if I compare that to the polarity of my voltage source, I see that those are in opposite. This is from plus to minus. And so what I need here is actually a negative sign of this quantity to tell me the actual final uh, voltage VC uh, after I've reached the new steady state. Doing that calculation would give me the final voltage there of negative four volts. Okay, so now we have all the information we need in order to calculate or to just write the expression rather for what the voltage VC is doing as a function of time. So applying the general expression that we know for RC or RL circuits, we know that this expression could be written as the final value, so in this case minus four volts, plus the difference of the, um, the initial value, eight volts, minus the final value, minus four volts, okay? And then this term multiplied by the exponential minus T over tau uh, 11 seconds, I'll plug that in here. So just doing this quick math here, so this is eight plus four, so that would be the 12, should have minus four plus 12, uh, with the exponential minus t over tau of 11 seconds. Okay. So then this is my final expression for how this voltage is changing as a function of time, which is ultimately what we we're trying to get out of all this. So we see here that what's going to basically happen if originally when I started uh, with the circuit, I charged my capacitor up to 8 volts. Well, then I opened that switch. Uh, I start to get a discharging of the circuit from 8 volts then it starts to recharge, but in the opposite polarity until I have a value of minus four volts here. And this uh, time constant of 11 seconds is going to tell me about how uh, quickly that decay is going to happen, um, which in this case is going to be several uh, tens of seconds, of course, before I reach the new steady state in this case, right? So I hope that makes sense, and um, that wraps up for this problem. Hope to see you on the next video.